from the Journal of Aframus Long Journey, Pilgrim, with notes by Avos Tor, scholar of Reeve Library. Erev Day, 20th Cycle, 7th Year, 81st Turn, 54th Day in the Trees. We found a ruin today. It is a tower, tall and made of a dark stone. It is weathered but it appears solid enough. There are no stones fallen from it, and the mortar does not appear loose. Note, it is odd the way some buildings end up preserved in the woods. Often, after an initial period of accelerated decay, they will stay standing more or less unchanged for at least several hundred years. Torn insisted on looking inside. I counseled caution, but he refused to listen, moving inside. I told him I was certain he would break his fool neck, or else bring the tower crumbling down. But he was already in the shadows. I sighed, and followed after, stooping down to fit under the doorway. There were stone stairs leading up into the darkness, and a square hole in the floor. There were what appeared to be hinges, but if there was a door set in the hole, it had long since rotted away. Torn had lit his lantern, and was moving up the stairs, Sujur following behind him. The stairs did not look like they could support my weight, so instead I turned my attention to the hole. It was just large enough that I could fit myself through. It was a tighter fit than I had thought, but I made it through, being careful to keep my own lantern lit as I moved through. I found myself standing in a pile of old, rotted wood. I determined that it had been another staircase. Not being made of stone, they had not withstood the test of time. The room was roughly square. The walls were lined with the same stone as the rest of the tower. It smelled strongly of damp and earth. On the walls were weapons. There were swords and staves, shields and spears. There were stranger weapons, like a metal ball covered in spikes, set on the end of a metal stick. I also saw a mirror. I stood in front of it. Looking myself over, Torn had used my ripped robe to enlarge the other two, so I was clad well enough. In the dim light from the lantern, my scales seemed duller, especially my stripes. I noticed that I seemed broader. Had I put on weight, eating so well, perhaps I should eat less. Though... I seem to be more hungry more often than not now. Then the mirror no longer showed my reflection. It showed a room full of treasure. Torn was in it, and so was Suja. He was reaching cautiously for a pile of gold pieces. To his right and just behind him, I saw a suit of armor beginning to move, raising an axe up high. Note. The woods would be so much safer if stray thaumaturgists wouldn't keep leaving their things around. This reminds me of the time an entire expedition's worth of graduate students ended up changed to toads. They all got extra credit, as I recall. I shouted a warning and ran to the hole and began pulling myself up, something that took me far too long to accomplish. By the time I was out of the hole and standing in the tower again, Suja was running past me, through the door. Torn was still on the steps, running as quickly as he could down them. He slipped about twice my height above me, sending him tumbling down. He hit one landing, and then I caught him. I took him outside. I took up both our packs. And, not letting him down, I ran, 
Suja followed close behind me. When I finally stopped, several minutes away, we found that Torn's arm was broken by his fall. He will mend. I am simply happy he escaped unharmed. It was Suja, he explained, that saved him. When he heard my distant shout, he had not realized it was meant for him. But when Suja hissed, he had tumbled forward, landing on the gold, and then vaulted around the armor and ran down the stairs. He had not taken any gold, as any gold with such a guardian might also be cursed. I agree with his caution. I only wish he had not felt the need to explore in the first place. 